We're going to need the inverse. I multiply by one third, it's going to make every number smaller. Does that make sense? Well, uh, okay, so from here, yeah. the inverse of that is two. From here, but if it was three, what value are going to be What's the yeah? That's, the that's a different problem. Oh. The hypothetical. Oh. I, mean, I think you can do it. Can't you make this? I'm just going to go ahead and write down the same five values. So just not that's not changing. Stretch it or compress. Okay, so now we have to do. So remember, if it's inside, we're not looking vertically, we're looking horizontally. Like, horizontally, did it well, stretch? Well, that's what I mean, zero, zero. You can still do it as one equals... By what? By one third. Okay, so that would be one third is zero. Notice how that became one third. Zero point three repeating is one third. Notice that nine over here. So you'll have to do like the... You can do the... So the way... Okay. So we'll say it that way, so but I want to remind you, what was the direction term we values, when we can the operation was three, outside the or operation, by what? it was going would be the same as multiplied by 3. Multiplied by 1 third to get the text value. So going back to that, the horizontal So where we were multiplying by 3 to find the y values, we can multiply by the inverse to find the x values. Okay, so 1 times one third. I mean, no, but it's how it to you. Is that how yeah, it's going to be? Yeah, what happens if you just put zero? Okay, we'll do it how it's on there. Okay, so then what is, so then for two would be. So 1.3, like that? Yeah. guys a few more minutes um, finish up slide 10 and we'll come back together for our class discussion
and I would multiply the outputs whenever I was multiplying to change that, that output value, what did I have to do here to get these x values? What did we, we, yeah, we still multiplied, but if I multiplied by 3, 9 times 3 is 27. So how did I go from this 9 to this 3? Divide. 
Okay, so so we can um so dividing by three is the same as multiplying by one third. So that, that relationship I want you guys to see here is how these horizontal um, transformations act in the inverse of the vertical ones because where we would multiply by three to get these um, output y values, we multiplied by one third right. to get the x values of the horizontal dilation. Okay, so um, that's another thing to be paying attention to when we're talking about direction and the location in relation to the function's main operation. And then let's look at, um, can you click? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Here. Yeah, we can we can end on talking about this question about how it's a reflection. Mm. Did y'all have a chance to look at this in your this question in your group yet? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you already do the one just the plain old one third? Or, oh, I missed yeah, that yeah. detail. Yeah. Okay. That's I was looking at the wrong one. My bad. Ouch. Okay, so I left these table, the way I structured this is I left it to where um, this question's extending on that last one we had. So it says, so this was the, um, the table for horizontally stretching by a factor of three, but now how are these values going to change if I replace this three with a negative one third? Is it on, say that again, Mises. So, so how do you know ref, reflect? Say that again. Okay, show on the graph, but also how do you know what what? Oh, I erased it. Multiplication of what causes a reflection? Very negative. Okay, so it because it's negative. Also, what axis is it going to reflect over? Wow. How do you know that? Oh no. Right, the y values are the same, but what values am I multiplying? Okay, so there's that constant is if I um, multiply the x values by negative, that function is going to reflect over the y axis. So we're making it, how can we, oh, let me write this equation, so we'll call this, we call this one h of x. Okay, so then, talking about going from this to this one from the parent function, how are those values going to change? So, y values will stay the same. Okay, so I have the same y values, and how do you know that, Chloe? Um, because, it, like, when you multiply the x values by a negative number, it only takes the x values, not the y values. Okay. Okay, and then so... What are my y, I'm sorry, what are my new x values going to be? How is that going to change these x values? So to get from here to here, I had to divide these values by one third. But now my factor is one third. So what am I going to have to, I'm sorry, did I say divide? I multiplied by one third. Okay, I'm sorry, I multiplied, did not divide. Let me, let me start that over. To get from here to here, I multiplied these x values by one third, which was the inverse of that. Okay? Right. So what do I need to multiply to get these x values? Okay, so if this was 3 and the inverse of one third, what's the inverse of one third? So right, so I'm going to multiply by that um, by just three, but also because we have the negative here, we also want to add the negatives. Okay, so what's my new x value is going to be? Okay. Okay, do you guys see where these values are coming from? 
So to get my new x coordinate, I need to multiply 9 times a negative 3. Okay, so the main the main idea I want you guys to begin from this um, is that when we are talking about the dilation factor, which you can also make a note of this in your graphic organizer under the dilations section, is that the the um, the dilation factor for horizontal and vertical acts in the inverse to the location or to, yeah to the location. What did you say? So the 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 dilation factor. So it acts the inverse for horizontal transformations. Because if we have a vertical dilation by a factor of three, remember we were just multiplying, we just had to multiply those y values by a factor of three. So whenever we're dealing with something vertically, it's like you don't have to worry about anything in particular. But this still goes into that same idea of dealing with horizontal translation or I'm sorry, horizontal transformations, we have to think of the inverse. And that's where we're gonna end today. Um make well, sure you get those notes down and then I'll have a quick conversation. Yeah. We'll have to do the you wanna do the exit slippers with the elevator for tomorrow? Yeah. And we'll like we'll like finish working on like these questions of this activity. Um, later, but you guys have at least all gone through the dead part of it. So, please get those notes down. But I need you to pause and look up here when you're done getting those notes down. I'll give you time to pack up when you're done. Get your notes down. Pass up here, please. So I can see you're ready. All right. Couple of quick details. Uh, first off, we're going to go back over the grading rubric tomorrow. We didn't, we didn't have time with it today, but I need you all to hear me clearly on this. When it comes to that unit test, um, I would, I still genuinely believe most of you can do better than what I saw. Um, we did okay. I have to finish putting them into the Excel file to figure out exactly what our grades are. But I want you to hear me clearly on this. This is probably the largest content-wise unit we've had. And so I am going to, for probably this test and this test only, uh, open up the opportunity for you to do test corrections on your test. And then um, after you do test corrections and or come to tutoring, you can do a retest to earn a higher score. Okay? I care that you learn it, not necessarily when you learn it. And so I'm going to support you to become successful and to develop your understanding. Would you all agree that part of this uh, unit with the transformations is helping us understand the vertex form of that quadratic equation better? See those connections with the H and the K? A times X minus H squared plus K, stuff like that. So we can grow. We can get better. I'm going to support you in doing that. Sierra Gore and Sierra Kelly. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, but the thing is, I don't want to grade uh, an attempt at a retest just to see exactly the same mistakes. I gave you feedback on your test, and when everyone's made up their tests, I will pass those tests back probably on Thursday or Friday. Um, you got to do test corrections and then come to tutoring. I know some of us can't come to tutoring, and so I'm going to open it up that you do test corrections, you turn in your test corrections, and I still give you some feedback before you do a retest. But we got to learn from our mistakes. It doesn't make sense to continue making the same mistakes over and over, and I have seen that happen on this test from the understanding checks. A lot of us made the same exact mistakes on the test that we made on the understanding checks. Look at what you're missing. Ask questions to improve your understanding. Um, take advantage of that to grow, because all of the concepts that we've studied 
solving equations, linear, exponential, and quadratic functions, all that's going to keep showing back up throughout this unit. Math builds probably more than any other subject you study. So we want to build strong foundations here. Um, and legitimately, I will also say, a lot of y'all need to do your homework. Um, remember, if you made an A or a B on the test, I'll take out the zeros on homework or grades lower than that. But the people I'm seeing score high on the test are the same ones doing the homework. That should tell you something. Very few of us can be successful without doing any homework at all. Please fill out your graphic organizers. Also, do the Mathia and other things like that. That's designed to help you practice. If you completed Mathia, but you still need more practice, go and do more practice. Um, last note before we end class, I did ask that you turn in your graphic organizer today uh, for those first three words on transformations. Do you know what I'm talking about? You got it on Friday. You see a copy of it? I put it somewhere. Oh, you see it Yeah, that sheet right here. Can I say real quick? The first three words were due today. Hold on. I let first block turn in tomorrow. So y'all can turn in tomorrow, but it is due tomorrow. If you don't turn in tomorrow, it is late. Just these first three terms. Please use your notes. Focus on the ideas of functions and what's created in the functions. By the way, the second one talks about a constant. What do I mean by a constant? Huh? Not a rate of change. It says a constant value. So just if you're adding a 3 or multiplying by a 2, that's by a constant. Okay, so you need that here they are. I need to see That means you need these other papers as well. Yeah, yeah. And you probably need to come in and make up the other standing check that you missed. They weren't on this in class to help prepare for the understanding check. And it's based on a lot of what. And I'll pass it to everyone else back tomorrow. But it's a lot of what the understanding check is Okay, we kind of did look at that when I put those examples up in the beginning of the quadratic pair function and we had to create an equation from it. Do you not remember yeah, yeah. from that? But I mean, like, up there, just say, take those two tables on the left. Yeah. Uh, where we have okay, so from this one to that one. Like, what is, what's changed between 